are dealing with activating the spirit of breakthrough. Are you ready for that? Shout Lord. I am ready. Now, if you are going to have a breakthrough, listen to me very carefully, child of God. Number one, you must find God. Somebody say, find God. Somebody say, find God. You must find God. Because if you don't find God, who is the author of the breakthrough, you can never have breakthrough because breakthrough is or it originates from the realm of the spirit where God himself rules. So if you don't find God, you're not going to get your breakthrough. We as believers, we have a certain methodology of getting our breakthrough because our breakthrough does not come like non-believers. Are you here? Now listen to me. Listen to me. Some preachers are preaching a gospel that is shocking me. And this is what they say. You don't have to go to church and pray for money. You don't have to go to church and pray for success. That's what they say. And it sounds okay for a person who is immature in having a relationship with God. Then they are going to quote some guys. And they say, a man like this, and so on. He never even went to church one day, but is a multimillionaire. And they'll tell you, even uh, whoever, whoever is a multimillionaire, he has never seen the door of the church. But you Christians, you are praying every day, and you come to church looking for money. Listen, we don't come to church to look for money. Are you following me? That's why today, everybody who leave Egypt and want to go across the Mediterranean Sea, they need to depend on a yacht. They need to depend on a ship. But we have our own way of doing things. Ah, you're not catching it. Anybody who is going to leave Egypt, even those who are leaving Liberia, going into London, they are dying in the ocean while we're trying to sail by boats to go to London. Have you, have you read about that? But there is a group of people who never used a yacht. They never used a ship. They are the road in the hand. And because the now our methodology is different, therefore, don't compare me with non-believers. Am I talking to somebody? The way a non-believer does business is different from the way I do business. I don't know who I'm talking to right now. There are people who went across the Red Sea and they never used a yacht or a boat. There was a guy who had a rod in the hand. And when he hit the water, the Bible says the water parted and they walked on the dry ground so mr educated can you try to explain to me about your intellectual business why i cannot believe for a miracle in the house of god and they tell you go to a marketplace listen to me i am here i preach the gospel i go to places i'll preach the god i told you i was in australia and when I was in Australia, I preached a sermon on grace. I meet a man born in Nigeria. I'm coming from South Africa. I'm in a small place called Perth in Australia. He doesn't know from anywhere. I'm giving a testimony how I crashed my X5 and I broke my arm. And how my car finished to pull on a spot and the man gets moved. And he, I am not selling no product to him. I'm not selling water to him. I'm not selling oil to him. I'm telling him what the Lord did for me. That when my car was beyond, God still saved me. After the service, he came to me. Man of God, I heard that your car, X5, got crushed. What car would you love now? I said, why are you asking? He said, God has put it in my heart. I need to replace your car. I don't know him from anywhere. Those are what we call what? Miracles. And a man wired me when I found my Range Rover. 750,000 rand. And I bought my first Range Rover. I don't know him from anywhere. We don't even communicate right now. He doesn't even care about me. He just blessed me and that was it. So, number one, you find God very quickly. Number two, find a priest. Somebody say, find a priest. Judges 17. Find a priest. Judges 17. Verse 9 until 11. Can we read that? 
And Micah said unto him, and Micah said unto Whence him, cometh thou? Where do you come and from? And he said unto him, I'm yes. a Levite of Bethlehem, Judah. I'm from Bethlehem, Judah. And I go to sojourn where I may find a place. Come on. And Micah said unto him, yes. Dwell with me and be unto me a father and a priest. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I want to ask you a question. Do you know who is Micah here? This Micah the Bible is talking about is a non-believer. Is a man who has got gods in his house. Is a man who even consecrated his own son as a priest to the gods. Micah here is a non believer. You read from verse 1, you find the story. Now, you, you must follow. And I will give you 10 shekels of silver by the year. Be my father and my priest. I give you my uh, 10 shekels of silver every year. And a suit of apparel. And I'll give you clothes. And thy victuals. And I'll give you food. So the Levite went in. The Levite went in. And the Levite was content to dwell with the man. Yes. And the young man was unto him as one of his sons. And the Levite took Micah, a non-believer, as a son. And Micah consecrated the Levite. Yes. And the young man became his priest. And he allowed him to be his priest. And was in the house of Micah. And he was in the house of Micah. Then Micah, then said Micah. Wait. Listen now what Micah is saying. Follow this. Go. Then said Micah. Then said Micah. Now know I that the Lord will do me good. Now I know that the Lord will do me good. Seeing I have a Levite to my priest. Now I have a Levite priest. The Lord is going to be do, you do what? You do me good. Why is Micah looking for a Levite priest? He has tried all these other priests and he found there was no change that was coming. But when he cried to have a father and a priest, he even said, because remember, people of the world, they understand the spiritual things more than most of you. They understand how the realm of the spirit operates more than most of you. And he said, now I know that God shall do me good because I have a priest. Who is a priest? Somebody who represent me to God. And there are a lot of you here who don't understand the importance of having a priest in your life. You don't understand the importance of being in the church and having a man of God as a priest over you. And my kind of believer is saying, now I know. Everything shall be okay. My God shall do me good because I have a Levite priest in my house. There are certain breakthroughs. They will never come in your life until you meet a spiritual covering. Until you meet a priest who shall pick you up and take you before God and fight certain battles in a certain dimension and in a certain capacity to defeat things that fight you. Somebody shout glory. Because some of you here, your breakthrough is not in the physical, it is in the spirit, and it is until the spiritual things are defeated, there will be no manifestation. But I came to let somebody know today that as you rise to discover who your God is, and you honor your priest, the Lord himself shall fight for you and shall give you breakthrough. I say he shall give you breakthrough. So you activate the spirit of breakthrough in you when you find God and when you find a priest. That's why you get shocked. I, I listened to the testimony of my son. The reason why you have remained blessed under here, it is not just because of my prayer. It's because you have a priest over you. And people that reject the priest, they cannot see the goodness of the Lord. And you know what the church is promoting today? And what the world is promoting? The world is teaching you to have a fight. Or to, they are putting a fight between the priest and the church. So that the church may disrespect who? The priest. And they know when you disrespect the priest, there will be no spiritual breakthrough in your life. And yet, Warner, they have their own priest they have consecrated, like Micah, who had his own son as a priest in the house. He had all the gods in the house until he realized whatever he was doing, it was not happening. Then he had to go and cry to a Levite priest and say, Hey, 
come into my house, become my father and become my priest. And when the guy accepted, Micah immediately, before anything was done, he said, now I know the Lord shall do me good because I have a priest. I came to let somebody know, everyone under my voice today, the God that I've served for 35 years, he shall do you good in the name of Jesus. I don't care the weapon that they try to do against you. They may try to resist you. In your business, they'll never resist you. I want you to hear me. You are not on your own. You have a priest that bring you before God. Even when you are sleeping, there is a priest that represents you to God. There is a priest who carries your burdens unto the Lord. You may not know how much this thing will change your life, but I come to let you know today that as long as you have a priest that stands between you and your God and takes your burdens and show them to the Lord, breakthrough shall come. Somebody shout power. Key number three and I close. You must find God, find a priest, and find a seed. When you find a priest, make sure you give him the ten shekels. Make sure you give him the apparel. Make sure you give him food. That's what the Bible says. You can never be a son to a priest and you don't contribute to a priest's life. A son who does not contribute to the father is not a son. A son who does not contribute to a priest is not a son. This guy said, come be my father and my priest. I'll give you 10 shekels a year. And I'll give you the apparel. You'll never be naked. And I'll give you food. You'll never be hungry. Your job, I don't want you to go and work. You must be inside my house. As a priest, lift me up to your God. And people are talking nonsense. And they are telling you, tell your pastor to go and find a job. We are working hard already to solve your generational curses. We are working hard already to solve your unstable relationship. Your complicated marriages. We are working hard already. We are almost insane. Second Samuel chapter 24, verse number 24. Yes. And the king said unto Aruna, Nay, but I will surely buy it of thee at a price. I'll buy this at a price. Neither will I offer burnt offerings unto the Lord my God of that which to it cost me nothing. I will not give to God anything that cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for 50 shekels of silver. Yes. Verse 25. 25. And David built there an altar Listen, unto the David Lord. Built an altar and unto offered the Lord. burnt offerings of peace and peace offerings. Peace offerings. So the Lord was entreated for the land. Yes. And the plague was stayed in Israel. Breakthrough here did not come because David prayed. He went to Aruna and I said, he said, I want to buy a thresh floor. And Aruna said, I'm going to give it to you for free. And David said, I cannot give to God anything that does not cost me anything. So the true seed is a seed that costs you something. There was a plague in the land of Israel. The people were dying. Animals were dying. They prayed and prayer was not answered. And he decided to buy a threshing floor. And he made the sacrifice unto God. He raised an altar. And he called the offering the peace offering. Whenever you give a seed, give it a name. Don't give an empty seed and a nameless seed. When you raise a seed, say my breakthrough, not only breakthrough financially. You say breakthrough maritally. Are you know what I'm saying? Breakthrough for my child to make it in school. You need to give a name to the seed. And the Bible says when David gave a seed, it entreated God. And the plague seized him. There was no more trouble. No prayer. Seed. Three things. Find God. Find a priest. Find a seed and you're going to activate breakthrough in you.